What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more AFK Journey, and since today is the first day of the Waves of Intrigue season, we need to go over what the tier list looks like right now, because remember, at the beginning of the season, there's going to be certain heroes that you're going to use more often, like Cocos, and things like that, heroes that are going to get a survivability to your team, because remember, when we jump into Dream Realm, we're starting off back at like basically level 1 again, and you're going to have to change up your team compositions a little bit before you get back to those really prime optimal teams that we had at the endless mode so let's go over what this looks like uh, we're actually gonna be going over and talking a little bit about pride wins tier list because they did change up the layout of it which I think is really really cool how they did it however I do have some personal critiques things that I found that worked better and such I uh, just get a good discussion going hopefully you guys enjoy this one let's jump into this tier list so first off, if you guys haven't checked it out, I'll put a link directly to this tier list uh, in the description down below. Pridewin has some amazing, amazing information. Tries to get it out as fast as possible. You can see Zebo, Vulcan, Danger Gray, they all... Uh, put input into this from their experiences from end game players experiences and it's really really cool to see something like this you'll notice there is a couple different versions now they have a generic tier list and a dream realm only tier list if you guys only care about the boss fighting this is here for you keep in mind uh it could be really good it could be well mm -hmm. I like the generic one overall because it does give you a better all overall feel for what your account should look like. Granted, I love Dream Realm and that's where I focus on more, so I tend to drift towards this Dream Realm ranking. However, let's start off with the AFK stages because we know with the new season we're going to have to grind a ton of AFK stages and a not much has really changed here. Uh, the big thing is going to be having Smokey and Mirky on your team basically as one of the biggest damage dealers. You're going to want either an Almus or a Fresto tank in the front row they're just the best too i know for a long time people kept saying granny was better than almas almas is definitely the go-to if you can't build a fresto tank the best thing for afk pushing to get is almas and it's getting almas to mythic plus so that you get that extended cc now as you see here almas really falls flat in other game modes whereas fresto is very very good in all those other game modes so just keep that in mind when we're talking about that Coco can be an amazing survivability tool that's usually these three heroes are usually used in tandem with a combination of the next two. Uh, specialists are really interesting because they're there for the like the crowd control or the survivability aspect of it. Eren is overall going to be one of the best uses in the AFK stages because he fits right in with that Smokey team. Can move the enemies closer to Smokey to make sure they get in that blue damaging aura with the Mythic plus Smokey. Uh, Carolina can be of use. I've I think she's a little overrated in this. She can be very, very strong, though, just like the old traditional team. Scarleta is amazing for that early, like, early, what, first 20 seconds survivability on your team. And, of course, you have damage dealers. Arden, if you're not going for the pure smoky strategy, uh, Arden can be an amazing pick because he also does crowd control. Lily Mae stops ultimates as well as dealing damage. And Odie has that mythic plus unlock that lets you execute enemies. The only one that I consider bumping up is potentially bumping Taylene up into the S plus tier. I've had a lot of good experiences with her, Smokey, like Haywin, even on a team together. They seem to work very, very well. But to be honest, anybody in the S tier is also very good. It's just going to be a full tier down in like viability compared to the rest. Floribel, the best summoner in the game, essentially, when we're talking about damage dealing, I feel like, for these stages. A lot of adds get added to the battlefield. It really adds the survivability to your team. Surprisingly, Lanya has been able to do pretty decent, but it's weird because, like, if you're not S-plus in this game, it's like, well... Yeah, you're an S tier hero, but if you're not S plus, you're just not getting used as much. If you guys were a fan of Lenya, she's definitely a viable option, just not the best of the best. Like I said, Taylene they have listed as specialist. I think she could actually be considered the damage dealer on your team as well if you build enough healing around her. Other support heroes, you guys know, all four of these are absolutely amazing. Haywin at Mythic Plus is going to give damage reduction. Damien does the crazy amount of AoE healing and resummons. And then, of course, you have Antandra Brew. Brutus. Brutus is a nice one. If your team's dying way too fast, you chuck him in the front row, let that immunity go up, and then he survives. The downside is Song of Strife is over, so we don't have that season buff to him anymore. Uh, so he's not going to last as long, and we don't have Magic Charm, so his immunity definitely took a big hurting. After that, you can see a lot of the heroes that we used to use at the beginning of Song of Strife are kind of here. 
but they just kind of keep falling off little by little. Honestly, though, if you can build a team with the top S plus row, you're going to have the best benefit and the best start to the season in AFK battles. Moving over to battle drills. This is one not many people care about as much. However, I do think there's one really big issue with this list right here. Uh, and <laughs> why is Ulsa down in the A level? When it comes to battle drills, my Ulsa, granted she has a little bit higher, more powerful uh, exclusive than Odie. She is up there in damage with Lily May and Odie. You want magic damage dealers when it comes to battle drills. If you care about your guild, this is the type of team you want to be able to run because of all the different synergies we have you'll notice most of the same heroes are at the top here as you saw in the last list however there's other ones that do drop further down uh lily may odie alsa taylene those are like the go-to damage dealers and then of course you just build mikola support smoky ludovic you just put whatever other supports you can get on your account there and again lenya is like almost at the top there but not quite. She Because she's not doing the magic damage that these other heroes do, she does fall off. So just keep that in mind. Next up, my uh, my favorite. My favorite game home, Dream Realm. Lily May. Again, you've noticed Lily May at the top of every single list because she's just hands down the best damage dealer in the game right now. Taylene as well is up there almost in every single category. Mikola is up there and Reinier is up there. Uh, so one thing I will say in Dream Realm, I feel like Fresto in the early game here might have some uses still. I know most people go with the Reinier support. Fresto can be used as a damage dealer, tank, and support hero, especially if you have him at Mythic Plus. Uh, and that's because his illusion is going to give damage reduction to a hero, and that's a lot of what Reinier does too. Granted, Reinier is going to become much more valuable right now at the beginning of the season compared to what he was at the end of the last season because we need that survivability. And when you swap and you have Mythic Plus on him, you're giving that target damage reduction and a ton of of healing because sometimes support heroes just cannot survive you'll see the return of heroes like kruger and shakir into a lot of teams because if you have physical damage that's going to be a huge combo again lenya and Odie are really good damage dealers as well and surprisingly enough sinbad is very strong overall like if, if you want to see something interesting here if you take a look at what they're ranking for dream realm only he's like up there on a lot of them one of the best to use on lone gaze one of the best to use on skyclops really good overall uh, really just struggles against the crystal beetle, which we'll be talking about here uh, in the next week as soon as we get it on our main account. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Dream Realm, overall, you're going to see heroes like Mikola take the top spot over Smokey and Mirky just because of the way she works. Granted, if you do have Mythic plus Smokey and Mirky, that's where he does usually take the bump because he's providing some damage as well. Like I said, Coco is going to be making a return because of her damage reduction and her shielding because you just need to survive in Dream Realm nowadays. And lastly, PvP. Not much has changed here except for the chance that Dunlinger might become up in that S plus tier very very soon it's hard to say uh aaron's quality has gone down arden also all of them have gone down recently and it's basically still the dnl meta right yeah with some vala counterplay and stuff and even i don't even know if where Sil sylvina is here and wait am i blind where did they put sylvina in this list Oh, there she is. She's right there. She, they put her at A tier. She can have some counterplay, especially if the enemy teams are using Valas and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Reinier on offense is going to be absolutely amazing. Haywin for the damage reduction, AoE healing. Damien for the AoE healing and the constant resummoning of the chariots. I mean, Thorin Div's damage reduction revives multiple times. So you can take a big nuke and then revive and then come right back. The only one that I'm surprised isn't a little higher is Taylene. Again, Taylene is another one where I feel like as a specialist at S+, can be very good uh it really just depends on what the enemy team is running and yeah a lot of this is still the same fresto dunlinger dunlinger is going to be a little bit of a disappointment if you want to compare it to like someone like fresto but what dunlinger does do is very very specific so keep an eye out for that there's high hopes that sinbad is actually going to be pretty decent in pvp as well depending on your team compositions and of course you've seen lenya on the test servers that we've shown once in a while people do make this hero work in pvp very very solid and of course Coco and Rowan have some uses overall, but Damien is like the go-to healing supporter. If, if your PvP team doesn't have Damien in it, 
you're probably doing something wrong. That's how powerful he is. And then, of course, Scarleta. If you got her at Supreme Plus or at least Mythic Plus, very, very good. She can remove enemies from the battlefield at Mythic Plus 10 with some execution type effects. Really, really solid. So the only other one that you can reference to is this one here. You can see Mikola has become the new uh, Smokey, essentially. Smokey's dropped down Snow Stomper because of the way the silence works, whereas her healing and her aura stays during the whole time. Uh, and two of the new ones Smokey does not do great at, which is why he's dropped down pretty significantly. When it comes to most game modes now, Mikola is very, very useful so long as you can get her to survive. So let me know what you guys think about these tier lists. A couple of my comments there. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the comments I did say, like with Taylene and a couple other heroes. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. Love to hear your experiences. If you haven't done it just yet, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Good luck in Waves of Intrigue.